So what I have in here are all the components required for me to upgrade my underfloor smart heating control system to be a little bit more smart. What I have now is one of the most annoying systems ever. It has a time clock that is basically unusable. The buttons don't even press half the time. It does weird things and it's horrible. All the thermostats on the walls are analog things. They can be moved. My son can reach up and change them whenever he wants. So at night time, I'll hear our heating is on and I'll have to go into every room in the house to find out which uh, thermostat he has been fiddling with and put it back down again. Now, what these will do is means I can get rid of that time clock, I can get rid of those thermostats and I can replace them with something I can control from my phone or with Home Assistant. And let's get on and have a look inside the box and see what system we are using. Now, I spent quite a lot of time trying to find um, trying to find the best system for this. Now, there's lots of options out there. I previously had Nest in my last house, but that's not terribly affordable when you've got 11 zones, which is essentially what I've got because each room in our house has its own thermostat and its own um, underfloor heating actuator, which means each one has its own control. So if I was to use Nest, I'd need heat links for each one. It would be really messy. Also, quite expensive at £210 per Nest or something. The other options are various underfloor heating um, systems out there, which is what I've actually gone for here. So what I have here is the Heat Miser uh, e Neo uh, stats along with a bunch of other things. So I've got, um, this is a, a Neostat V2, which is a pretty basic um, but smart thermostat that goes in each room. I have 18 of these. These are actuators for, um, for actually opening and closing the valve that sends the hot water around each loop. Uh, the problem with the current ones is they're all 24 volt, whereas this system needs 230 volts. So I've also got, also got two of these, which are the Neo Ultras, which are uh, touchscreen thermostats that I can install in one on each floor of our house that lets you control all the thermostats from one unit, which might be useful if you haven't got your phone with you. Uh, we've got the uh, Heatmiser Neo Hub, which is required for uh, all of this to work on my phone or with Home Assistant. Um, and that is also compatible with Apple HomeKit, which I've recently stopped using, but might be useful anyway. Uh, I've also got some of these, which are um, wireless air sensors, which means I can put some uh, wire, uh, temperature sensors in my bathroom, for example. In the current system, um, the bathroom's thermostat is outside the bathroom, so if I use one of these, I can move the, the actual temperature detection inside. Um, and finally, we've got one of these, which is not a terribly exciting box. This is a wiring centre. I've got two of these, one for each floor, um, and that's a wiring centre that all of this can hook into. I've also got a few of these, uh, and these are just um, sort of uh, decorative plates that can go around if things look a bit bad when I take the old thermostats off the wall. So that's it, really. That's what I've got so far. I'm going to get on and get this installed. Um, I'll take you with me on that little um, journey under our stairs. Um, the first step is going to be to remove the old system. So let's go and get on with that. So the first job under here is to remove all of these actuators, which are uh, here. Before we've done any of that, we've isolated everything over here and we've turned everything off. So there's no real risk of getting electrocuted, which would not be fun. These are all 24 volts anyway, so probably not nice, but it's not going to kill you probably. Um, so yeah, this is the first one we've seen. This is our underfloor heating manifold. Up here is the old controller, old time clock, old actuators. That's going, that's going, these are going. So um, the one thing to note is uh, in here they've written the zone names on the actuators so when I take them off they're gonna get now they are sort of written on here they can just about make out what they say so that's okay and I have also taken a, a photo of this um, before I get started so to pull them off just push the button on the front um, and then they, they come off like that and then you can untwist this now this will probably work on the other one but we'll put that away in there anyway we'll begin though by just taking out all the wires um, first actuator. Just pull the wire out. That might not actually even be the first. No, there's three on the same zone here. So we'll just take all of those off. Nice 
nice thing is when they installed this system is they've put a three core and earth cable to every every room thermostat point which is good for us because it means we can although the current system only uses two wires the new one uses um the new one uses uh well now we get this off so presumably not too tricky look at that in a second that's going to come out we've got some earths coming in here and these are all the the thermostat wire which is all being linked around with the uh, with the extra core right let me get this off <laughs> So that's our Upper Noor T40. Never buy one, they are awful. Oh, Alex, welcome. You alright? Yeah. Good. What am I doing? I am replacing our heating controls, Alex. What are you doing? These screwdrivers, yeah. well, I'm using them to unwire all of these actuators. Oh. Yeah, I've taken all those off, they're all down here now. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And now I'm taking out the time clock, which is up here. So we're going to take out this, yep. take the cable out, so we're going to take that off the wall entirely. Yeah. We're going to just unplug these from here. Yeah. We don't want them in there. You want loud in. Just policemen. Well, you know you're going to go on the internet now, don't you, Alex? Why? Well, because I'm filming this. And have, I'm you not used these, uh, have you not used these? Have you not used these? Have you not What have I not used? I haven't used those yet. No, I don't need the uh, the pliers. So uh, no, I haven't needed those yet. What I do need, though, is a what I could do with is an electric screwdriver, but I haven't got one with me at the moment. So we'll do the old-fashioned way. No, I don't need any wire cutters yet. Okay. Don't know when I'm going to need those yet. You want loud in here? This is where policemen are. I think you're rather. Not people, but not ladies. Not ladies? No. Why not? Because they are, because this is very dangerous for ladies. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right. I don't um, think that's true. It's just as dangerous for ladies as it is for men. It's not really dangerous for anyone because all the power's gone. You won't allow it here because it's a bit dangerous. Right. <laughs> um, so, now, next step is to pull out these thermostat wires and label them up so we can see what they are. So the first one, zone number one, zone number two, zone number three, and no, zone number four, zone number five, and zone number... Seven. Yeah, number seven. So we just need to you here. remember what they all are. So, where's my pen? Did I bring my pen, Alex? Yes. Where's my pen? Is No. No, it is uh, your sharp. Yes. Oh, there it is. Here's my pen. So, we'll take, we're just going to put in the number of lines. So that's one. I'm going to put two marks on that one, because that's number two. And we've got Number four, number five, yeah, five. and then find number seven, due to some auto-linking that happens on this upper and or two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we can unwire these thermostats cables now. go. Let's bring out all of these as well. So we've got all the wire we need. One more's in here. 
Right, so we've got five distinct thermostat cables now, and I think it's about time that we opened up this 240 volt, 230 volt compartment and unwired the, so we've got two switches, we've got the, um, there's, two, there's two inputs of power coming into this area. We've got the, the main permanent live from the heating controls, which are labeled heating controls, which comes to the fuse board. And we've got uh, the heat box that they've labeled as heating power, which just means the call for heat um, relay cable. So what happens is the, um, the heat pump sends in two cable, uh, cable in here, and we just connect them together when we want heat. And we've got here, um, we've got an isolator here, which means we can turn that off, because if we're in here, we don't, well, I haven't turned off the heat pump, because I don't really want the whole house to be cold and us not to have any hot water. Right, I'm just gonna go and get my, um, uh, no, I don't need anything, I've got all the bits I need. Let's, a bit big. Let's just remove these. Now, when well, they installed this, despite the fact that they didn't need it, and they shouldn't have used it probably, these, both these cables are three core and earth flex cables, which are like this, which means they've got a, an earth and a grey and a black and a brown. Now for this one, we could just have a normal two core on earth because it's for permanent live and it would be better if they were labeled live and neutral, certainly on this one. For the, for the heating fire, it doesn't really matter. They're both live and I only need two cables and I'm, there's, no, there's no earth in here. So let's take out, start with the, the permanent live. And interestingly, they've So it looks like we've got two screws. We've got one in there and we've got another one in there. So let's take those out. Right, so there's our old controller. We'll put that, I'm probably not going to ever do anything with this ever again, but I will just put it back together again. Okay, so that's our old system. Let's get that all out of the way. There's our old, uh, old heat clock. I said horrible things. Not nice at all. Ah, I've sat my foot. Oh. That hurts. All right, we'll drop the actuator. All right, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine actuators in total that were left over. Um, varying lengths of cable unfortunately on those. And we'll put all that back out there. So I think the next job is going to be to, well let's just separate all these up. Look at what they all are. Take these earth sleevings off, I'll put some new ones on them. Okay, so these are the five thermostats to go around the house. Now, um, okay, bit of a mess, but we can work with this. But now, it's that point of no return. I've got to continue because otherwise we're going to have no heat tonight. Um, right, I'm gonna go and get the new, um, the new, what do we call it? Uh, the new wiring center. Let's go and get that, see how we can fit it in this cupboard. Right, this is the new wiring centre, this is the uh, Heatmiser UH8. There is a UH6, but it looked a little bit more, uh, a little bit more expensive for some reason. So this has got, um, it's got eight zones supported on it. Let's uh, take that lid off. So it's got eight zones on it, um, we've got eight zones on the bottom and then thermostat zones on the top, so we'll put our actuators down here for each zone and then we'll, um, we'll connect our heat enable over here. So whatever happens, it's gonna need a new cable because that's never gonna reach. In fact, we're gonna need new cables on both of those, so I'll put one of some new cables from these. Um, I 
Let me have a think. I'll come back to you. Right, let's get on and install. Whoops, let's put this up here on the wall. Sleeping is here. And you've got these very long sort of connections here. What I'm going to do is cut these down to about the same, same size. Cut those down to there. Okay, so we've got to get a main supply in here too, actually. So, um, oh, that hasn't gone in at all. Switch line. Switched. <laughs> Right, sorry about that. Battery camera died. I did four and then I realised. Uh, right, let's put this fifth one on. So these are relatively easy to put on. Take out the actuator, remove the of the, this little connector, move the turn off, pop that on there like that, just push it down and then bring the cable up through the back. Now I'll need to identify which one, which zones these will go with in a second. Then we're going to connect them up into these actuator ports for the right zones. Just going to get the other, the other four actuators. If this all works, I think I'll be quite surprised, but it should do. There's no, no real reason it wouldn't. I suppose the main reason it might work is, well, no one of these actuators is faulty, or the whole wiring centre's faulty. Who knows, really? Could be anything. Um, Oh, I haven't put the bracket on. My mistake, let's put that on there. Our oh, bracket is in, I don't know what it goes, is it not? So when I put these on, it essentially closes the valve, and then when they get power, 
they will convert that electrical energy into heat, which will then allow the um, the pin, the, uh, the, the, the I think if, if these are made with wax, which I don't know if they are, if they are, they sort of basically melt the wax on the wax or the material, the thermal material changes state to make it liquid, which means the pin can just easily then fit up into, uh, it just goes up, which is just how actuaries work, really. So, in theory, once these are all wired in, they'll be able to be given their 230 volts by the wiring centre and everyone will be happy. Uh, like these, but we know both those cables are far too short, so we're going to re, we're going to make new ones in there. But let's get in the now. The first now there's two live and neutral ports for each actuator, which is great and everything. Except I've got three, so we're going to have to double one up, which is fine. We're allowed to do that. Um, we can we can go up to we can we can make this cable a bit shorter. Just so it's not quite so so mad, madly long. We don't need that to be, you know. We have a little bit of slack, but we don't need lots. We have a move house. I'm not taking this with us, am I? So let's just cut those down a bit. And now we'll see if this works on them, which it does nicely now. times it is necessary for all the other actuators all nine of them and I've got another nine upstairs so what fun this is it better work because if it doesn't work either a it's gonna be very cold tonight in our house well just downstairs at least or B I'm gonna have to install the old system again and frankly, my interest in doing that is minimal. Right, so next zone is hall. It's gonna go to zone three. I literally watched it fall and then it vanished. How does that even happen? Oh, there it is, I'm just blind. Right, there it is. Let's get that screw in there. So now I just need to go and see if I can find some flex for these because the only other things that need to be plugged into this board before we actually, we're not going to power it up because the other thermostats are. 24 volts and they will not appreciate the 230 volts that this will send to them and I don't really want to break them but I'm, equally I don't really care but I'm not going to do that. So we're getting a main supply cable from here into there. 
you might be able to just come in here and go over the top. There's quite a bit of space on the front here. Um, so yeah, it's quite useful that there's some little lights on these zones. Um, when it comes to that, the, that'll be pretty good. And that will go in nicely. Right, I will be back when I've got some cables. Okay, right, it's time for us to get this uh, heating control main wire and I've got some I've got some flex. We're just gonna take off this cover and we'll just test it. So everything here is actually dead. Obviously everything this side of the switch is dead. And we verified that earlier, but I haven't. The rest of the system is also off. And the mains to the whole heating controls are are dead, but we're going to verify that before we start poking around. Before we start poking around with things that are live. So a little look in here then. Right. There's a be straightforward system in there. So let's just verify that that's dead. Neutral. Right, that's dead. Right, let's let's remove all of these. choice to do that but cable or heating fire as they call it here.
Right, so the next step is to get this replaced with the new one. So this is a, a new Heatmiser Neo Series V2 stat. So we can start by just taking this off the wall. Um, we'll just take all these out. So remove the old wiring. We've got there, and we'll just loosen this up a bit. Loosen oh, get these things out. Okay. We'll just rotate and remove all of these bits. Okay, so there's our we'll put that put that back together. Horrible things these. Absolutely horrible. If you don't even want to know what temperature is, these are what you get. But we'll do this better. Right, so we need to get the new stat out. Open that up. Quite a few of these to do today. I'm only gonna film this one so I can get on myself. So we've got a quick start guide and a little book, and then <coughs> the thermostat itself. So we'll just take out the little screw in the bottom Take that out, and then we can remove the, the front part from the, the base. And we're gonna pop the base in there. Now, before we can do that, I need to get these little lugs out of the way. Because otherwise they get in the way, as I found when I did the first one of these. Right, now we need to just have a little bit of length on there. We'll put the live thing on the other cable. Now we also need to build a small loop. So I'm going to have a piece of cable here. That's probably a bit short actually for this. So I'll cut a bit bigger. And we're going to use this to link out between live and live and uh, the common on the plate, which I've dropped on the floor. As with all of this heat miser stuff, all the screws are done up when it arrives. So we'll undo all of the ones we need, which is neutral, live, A1 and A2. So we're gonna do a loop between live and A1 to begin with. Because A1 is basically common. And then we will loop that back round into, into the live. And we'll also add in our own actual live from here. So we'll pop that in too. Just got to glue that up. Make sure both are secure. Pop in our neutral. These are really quite simple to, to switch over. Um, I'm quite pleased because I've got lots to do. And then we'll put our switch line into the A2 socket. Okay, just check all those are safe and as tight as we can, we can get them. Okay, now we're just gonna bend this back into the wall and then we're gonna pop it on it. There's a lot of, I don't know, my wife's gonna kill me. I'll just get to get the hoover out in a minute. Um, so we'll just pop this back on the wall. Do, do, do like that. Now this one's left a bit of a horrible mark at the top where the uh, old frame was positioned. Um, I probably will just ignore that for now. Um, but I do have some heat miser plates that can go behind this. So I may well come back and install them. So we'll just tighten up 
the back box screws, tighten this door, make sure it looks straight. We don't want it to be unstraight, do we? And then tighten that up there. Boop, 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 boop. Looks straight to me. And then once that's on there, we can just pop that on. Put our screw up, up here. And we're done. Now we just need to, that mess is horrible, um, but I'm, I'll fix that. Right, let's put all this mess in this box. Put it all away, can I keep it tidy? I'll leave the instructions out in case there's any reason I want to actually refer to them, but I don't think I will. I've got the PDFs online. So, thermostat, done. Okay, so I've installed the thermostats and now it's time to see if we can get some smart stuff happening. So this is the Neo Hub. We'll just get this out. So we've got a little, little guide here about that. I've got my phone here, which I'll just uh, use to set this up. So let's get this hub out. So we're going to see what we've got here. There's our hub. There's a home kit code there. There's a network cable. There's a USB power cable. Uh, looks like it's powered by USB, which is quite good. I always like a bit of USB power. And we've got a USB um, adapter or plug slash socket. So we'll just plug this in. One moment, please, while I undo this. And basically, as I've not done this before, I'm going to follow the instructions that they've given me. I'm not going to use their cable. I've got a cable here I can just pop in, connect it to my network. I probably won't leave it on my desk forever, but for now, it'll do. Right, so we'll turn it on. We can see a power light to come on. Let's see what it says to do. Uh, step one, connect power. Step two, download application. I've got that, let's run the app. It would like to access my home data, okay, and it would like some notifications. Um, and then we need to register an account, good. Uh, so register up there, this is interesting. I'm not entirely sure I like the style of the app. Just choose a random password for now. I'll change that later. Add location. Right. And press add Neo Hub. Well, it doesn't say add Neo Hub. It just says add location. So the instructions there don't set up this hub. It's going to try and connect it on the network. Press and release the connect button. Neo Hub found. Enter a title for this location. I'll just call it the name of my house, uh, Neostat. Okay, so it says searching, but it says it's going to ask me for a zone. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, at Neostat. Just seems to sit there. Maybe this isn't, maybe I need to activate a Neostat. Right, let's try what it, let's do what it says. Um, I'll be right back. Right, so there you saw was me installing the heat miser underfloor system with some neostats in my house. As you can see, I have my shoulder up there, wherever it is. Um, they're all now up and working. Everything's doing roughly what I would expect it to do. Um, so yeah, it's all it's all working well. The 
main thing I've noticed, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm hoping is easily fixed, is the thermosets themselves are reading quite a bit over the temperature of the room, and I don't know why this really is. Now, I don't know if they're being influenced by their own heat from their own power supply in them or what's going on. But for example, the thermostat in here right now is reporting a temperature of 22.5 degrees. But it's quite chilly in here. It's um, doesn't. It's definitely not that temperature. I bought a, a sort of cheapish um, digital thermometer from Amazon, um, uh, and that's showing it's 19.5 in here. Um, and I've got another one which I've checked it with, and that's showing it a lower, much lower number as well, sort of around the 1920 mark as well. So they can be recalibrated. I wasn't expecting to have to go and recalibrate them all. Um, I will do that, but I'm not really sure why they're, where, why they're doing that or or really what's going on. Um, so I'll, um, I'll need to, to investigate and keep an eye on that. Um, the video you just saw ended with me setting up the hub. Now I had problems with the hub. Um, every time I pressed add Neostat, it just spun like it did on the screen and then stopped and just reloaded the page and nothing happened. Um, eventually I restarted the app, I restarted the hub, um, managed to get into it and it was fine. Um, it did a firmware upgrade and then everything was fine. It was adding the thermostats was extraordinarily trivial um, and, and worked well. Now there's a couple of little things about it. If you buy the wireless air temperature sensors, which I bought for a button, they do not use the mesh network provided by the thermostats, which means they have to be able to communicate directly to your hub, which is really, really annoying. Why doesn't that work? Why can't they be on the mesh network with everything else? So I can't have one at each end of my house um, unless I buy a booster or just one of the heat miser plugs, which also acts as boosters. Now, I don't really want one of those. I don't want to spend £40 on a plug that I don't need. I don't need smart plugs from heat miser. You do heating. I don't need you to turn on lights or turn on other things. I've got plenty of that sort of stuff in my house as it is. I just want to be able to talk to my wireless air sensors, temperature sensors. Um, so why they don't work on the mesh network is really annoying. So um, right now I've got three, only two of them can actually reach the hub. Um, sorry, only one of them can reach the hub, um, which is the one that matters. The other two don't really matter at the moment, but that's really quite frustrating. Um, it does say on the website, it's not entirely their fault for not communicating it, but it's a stupid limitation that I don't think is very helpful. The hub itself also integrates and works with HomeKit. Um, I don't really use HomeKit, but I did set it up just to see what it was like. Um, quite a lot of time when I open it, it does come up immediately saying not responding um, or in, and it can't connect or give me any data. It does usually kick itself into life, but it's not immediate. And that, that sort of not responding view that you see in HomeKit or in the Home app on, on iPhones and iPads is pretty much the main reason I stopped using HomeKit because I saw that a lot from other devices as well. Um, and that was quite frustrating. I don't know if that's anything to do with the hub or whether it's Apple or what it is, but it's annoying, um, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, but yeah, irritating. The Heatmiser app itself is all right. It does exactly what you need it to do. It looks all right, it works. Um, it's not the most beautiful app. It doesn't really compare to the apps that you can get from um, sort of Tardo or Nest, but again, smaller company, toy limited resources, I don't know, but their apps, their apps all right, it works okay. And it, um, there's a third party integration that works with Home Assistant, which is why I use it just to keep an eye on the temperatures and um, have it, you know, if I can, I can increase and manage it through that UI and that app if I want to. Um, there's an API on the hub itself. Uh, the documentation for that you can get by just emailing HeatMize when they email it to you. Uh, it's a JSON RPC uh, API, so if you know what that means, that's how it works. Um, I've had a quick play with it, it seems like it, it works. Um, it's totally unsecured though, so if anyone has access to the hub itself, they can access your heat system, they can do whatever they want with it. Um, change temperatures, change profiles, delete everything, whatever, they can do anything they want. So bear that in mind, um, you know, if you put it on your network, it's completely open to everyone. Um, so that's about it really. Um, I hope that was a useful, interesting video that you thought was yeah, mildly interesting. Um, would I 
change anything, I probably wouldn't. I think the system I bought works quite well. There's no, there shouldn't, be, even if the thermostats prove to be a total nightmare, um, I don't have to rip out the wiring center. I don't have to rip out any of the actuators or any of that sort of stuff. That's just now a very simple setup. If I wanted to bring in Tardo, for example, now, I could go and buy the thermostats. I could just put them on the wall and they would work out of the box because these now just act as simple relays. Um, basically. So um, yeah, they work well with, with many of the off-the-shelf thermostats that you can buy. So yeah, hope that was interesting. Um, I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.